Hi there, welcome to this video. Um, as you may be able to tell, I'm just back from holiday. I'm quite relaxed. Um, it was a nice trip to Greece. Um, we went to a place called Cape Sunio, which is just south of Athens on the Attica Peninsula. Um, it was uh, 35 degrees, sunny, a little bit of a breeze, and it was a really nice location. It's very close to the Temple of Poseidon. We had a lovely view of that. Um, it was primarily a holiday, so I didn't actually do that much um, photography. Um, we spent quite a bit of time around the pool, doing some activities in the hotel. Um, but one of the things I did do was I took my Z6 and my Z7 because um, one of the reasons we were down there was it was the summer full moon um, rising over the temple and I wanted to perhaps see if I could get some shots of that. Um, I also took um, the opportunity to try out um, the Z6 and Z7 in low light situations so doing a little bit of astrophotography, photography of the um, temple at night. Quite challenging situations because as you'll see from some of the images, the temple is lit up quite brightly at night. However, there's no other lights around it. So very high contrast. And especially when that full moon came up as well, very small areas of um, brightness with very dark other areas. So very high contrast, as I say. Um, I thought I was gonna try and do a small comparison of the Z6 and Z7 because those of you who've looked at the specs of the two cameras will know that they're, whilst they're primarily very similar um, in a lot of respects, they are different because of the sensor and not just because of the um, pixel count on the sensor. Um, if we look at the two specs, and I'll check with my notes here because there's quite a lot of numbers, the Z6 is a 24.5 megapixel camera, whereas the Z7 is a 45.7 megapixel camera. They are the same size full frame sensor. So that has an impact on the size of the pixels. And if you look at the uh, number of pixels on the um, Z6, it's um, 6062 by 4041 and on the Z7 is 8256 by 5504, which is what gives you that total um, megapixel count. As I said, because of the size of the sensor is fixed, the number of pixels is different. That means that if you look at the pixel pitch, i.e. the distance between the center of one pixel and the next pixel, there is quite a bit of difference between the two cameras. In the Z6, the distance between the centers is 5.92 micrometers. And on the Z7, it's 4.34 micrometers. So there is quite a, a difference in the distance between them. And what that means is the pixel size, the area of the pixel in the Z6 is 35.05 micrometers squared versus 18.84 micrometer, micrometers squared on the Z7. That may not sound like a lot, but when you get to the area of the pixel, which is what really matters for um, capturing those photons in low light, that's actually an 86% bigger pixel size in the Z6 compared to the Z7. And what that means is that, as you probably read, the Z6 is um, seen as a better low light camera. So I, I did try to um, capture some direct comparison shots between the Z6 and the Z7. However, I singularly failed on that. I'll hold my hand up. Um, and that's not because I didn't get any shots, but the Z6, one of the benefits is that obviously with a slightly um, lower pixel count on the sensor, you don't see as much or it's not as sensitive to movement as the Z7 with all those 45.7 megapixels. And what I found was um, it wasn't the fact that it was low light. I was using a tripod. It was a reasonably um, secure tripod. However, it was very windy in Greece and even the slightest movement caused blur, a minor amount of blur in the Z7's images versus the crystal sharp Z6's images. Um, and therefore it makes it very difficult to have a true like for like comparison. However, it did make me think and get me thinking around, well, actually it's not just about the pixel size, it is about getting that final image. And therefore there are certain circumstances where the Z6 is better in getting you the best image. 
I will be doing a um, future video that I filmed in Greece, um, looking at what I took with me and how I was using it. Um, but what I'm going to do in this video, I thought I'd focus on that low light capability. So let's take a look at some of the images I took with the Z6 and also the Z7. So just to give a, a little bit of context, um, these shots that I'm going to show you the, are at night time, but this is a view in the daytime, um, just so you can get a bit of um, context. What you can see here is the Temple of Poseidon, the Poseidon, the god of, Greek god of the sea, um, in Sunio in um, Greece, as I've said earlier, just on the southern tip of Attica, south of um, Athens. And there's a bay in front of it, and all of the photos were taken from this bottom right-hand corner of this shot, which is a beach um, at the hotel we were staying at. Um, so it's about a thousand metres from the beach across to the temple. Um, just to give you some scale. Um, so let's take a look at um, the first of the nighttime shots. And this um, was um, taken from the beach and it was on a tripod. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, we had a full moon while we were down there. So the moon is very bright. The temple is um, also lit up at night and we had some night snorkeling going on off the beach um, next to me. So we've got three areas of quite high contrast and quite localized bright um, areas. So really it wasn't possible to use neutral density filters to um, adjust that. So we got very high contrast but localized um, challenge here for exposing. So what I had to do was really try and balance the exposure to um, get some definition left in the highlights but also some definition left in the shadows to be able to pull out. Um, the moon was very bright um, as, as you would expect because it was a full moon and it was quite high in the sky um, and therefore that did burn out. It wasn't possible to keep that um, in exposure um, and keep enough detail in the shadows. Um, so this was shot with the Z6. Um, it had the 2470 um, f2.8 lens attached. It was on a tripod but it was quite windy um, and as you can see um, it was taken at about 36 mil um, f2.8 and in order to get something that was reasonably um, fast shutter speed for the conditions um, of 1 13th of a second I had to allow the ISO to drift up a little bit to ISO 3200. I didn't really want to go too much further above that because I was worried there might be more noise creeping in particularly with this slightly unbalanced exposure with the localized highlights. Um, so if we zoom into the temple um, you can see that actually it looks like it's quite blurry here but this is where really um, raw files come into their own um, because it, with a few local adjustments it is possible to bring back a lot of the detail that's um, in those highlights and in the shadows you can start to see the path weaving up the rock here you can see um, this is into one to one you can start to see the fluting on the columns you can see the detail in the yacht um, and this was really done with mainly localized um, adjustments around the highlights um, and if you, you, know, you zoom out and compare the original shot to the um, new shot. I've also changed the crop on this to a 16.9 to give it a, a slightly different feel. You can see there's quite a few stars coming out. Um, the one thing is though that if you if you do zoom in you can see a little bit of noise in the sky. It's not particularly worrying um, because you know at, at normal resolution um, for most people this image if you're using it on social media or perhaps printing it out on a small scale you wouldn't really see that noise. I did take it one step further with um, the NIC collection defined to um, noise reduction um, and in this shot as you'll see if, you, if we zoom in a lot of the noise in the sky has disappeared, a lot of the noise around the, um, the snorkelers has gone as well so you get a slightly better image. So you can get some really great images with the Z6, particularly if you marry it up with some really good glass like the 2470 f2.8 from Nikon. Um, and you can 
deal with the noise. Um, so, you know, this is a, a pretty respectable um, image, I think, under the conditions, which were quite challenging. As I said in the introduction, we were there during the full moon period and you may have seen some really iconic photos um, of the full moon right behind the temple. Um, sadly, this year, it wasn't quite the right timing for that. The moon actually appeared further down and was well above the temple by the time um, it was aligned. Um, so for this next series of shots, they were taken on the evening of the full moon and on the beach it was very difficult to get the right angle because you had a breakwater that was coming out which distracted in the foreground. Um, so I took um, most of these next shots were from the top of this lifeguards um, tower which made it quite restricted in terms of position and composition. It also made it quite tricky trying to change lenses and cameras on the tripod in the dark. Um, so let's start with this next image. This is with the full moon coming up over the peninsula. Um, it just appeared from behind the, um, the, the land on the other side of the, um, the bay. It was around about um, nine o'clock in the evening, so it was quite dark. Um, and as the moon rose, it was really red from the diffraction of the, the sun going down. Um, onto it. Now at this point in the evening because it was red it was relatively low um, it wasn't as bright as it was when it moved up through the sky and therefore it was a bit easier to get a composition because whilst you had um, some highlights in the moon and some highlights of the lit temple the contrast between those and the the foreground um, subjects were quite a bit lower than they were later in the evening when the sun, the, the sun was really hitting the moon and reflecting and the moon was much brighter. Um, as I said, it wasn't quite the perfect um, alignment because the moon was off to the left at this point, um, but it was enough to um, be able to exposed for the moon so if we zoom in here you can see the craters on the moon um, I chose to use the Z7 for these images because I was in quite a restricted position I had my 7200 lens but I knew that actually to get some of the images I may have to go into DX crop to get that 1.5 multiplier to turn that 200 end of the lens into a sort of 300 mil lens um, this was taken without using the DX crop. It was at the 70mm end of the 7200 f2.8. That's an F-mount lens, obviously. Um, I took this at ISO 100 to try and reduce the noise. It was on a tripod. It was a third of a second at f2.8. Um, and you can just see some of the definition in the foreground, in the shadows, but the temple and the moon were nicely um, exposed. So again with some adjustment, this time it took quite a bit more adjustment. This was done in Lightroom and I'm not particularly happy with some of the colour casts in this so I'm going to um, in the fullness of time use Photoshop to mask out and use some of the more complex approaches to get a much better image. But what you can see for the purposes of this video is that with Lightroom I could still maintain the exposure of the moon so that you can see the craters um, and also the temple up here you can again see the the individual block work here and the the fluting on the pillars um, so again with local exposure changes you can get a pretty good image out of something that looks you know pretty um, unrecoverable and again this is the the power of raw images um, so with the Z7, again, you get, you know, there's some noise in the sky if we go into one to one, but you can see the resolving power of um, the Z7 with a really good quality piece of um, a good quality lens on the front. Again, I put it through um, Nick Collection Define just to get rid of some of that noise. Um, and when it uh, loads up in full, you'll see. A lot of that noise has disappeared now, um, so you could really print this at a much higher, um, much bigger size if you wanted to, without too much of a, an impact on the um, quality. So again, you know, even 
with the, even with the Z7, you know, one of the benefits of the Z7, as I say, is the the flexibility to be able to shoot in DX mode. Um, and for the next shot, um, this one here, this was shot um, with a DX crop on the Z7. So in effect, um, the two, 200 mil end of the lens multiplied by 1.5 gives you a 300 mil lens. Um, again, I shot this when the moon was very low in the sky, so it was very red. Um, and you can see clearly the craters um, on the moon. So, you know, this is you know where you really do get the benefit of that 45 megapixel sensor in DX mode. You still get some really good shots. Um, again, I had to expose, obviously, for the, the moon um, to be able to get the detail in the moon. But again, with some local correction, um, you can pull out the shadows. And this is one of the benefits of the, of the image quality of um, the Z series cameras and modern mirrorless in general. Um, again, this was very quickly done in Lightroom rather than um, what I'm going to do in the fullness of time, use Photoshop to mask out and really get a much better quality image. And again, if you take out some of the noise, um, you can you can really see that uh, at one to one, you can still see the detail in the moon. So I hope this has given you a quick insight into the low light capabilities of the Z series cameras, both the Z6 and the Z7. It's not a direct comparison because actually in this situation, which one I'd reach for depended on what I was going to try and shoot. On the um, first image, I was using the Z6. However, on the second image, I chose the Z7 because with the larger sensor, here you get a much bigger envelope when you can use that DX crop to get a 1.5 multiplier on a lens. When you're perhaps in a restricted um, space where you can't move around to get the composition you want. So there are different um, times when each of these cameras would have benefits. And I think... They both perform very well when under difficult situations like um, like I've shown you in these images where you've got very localized high contrast areas. Um, so I've been pretty pleased with both cameras. Um, as I say, with some of the images, um, I'm going to be using um, Photoshop rather than Lightroom to get a better outcome. But it's worth just considering what is the outcome you're trying to achieve and what is the scenario you're going to be in if you've got the option of reaching for either. They're both equally capable, I think, in low light in the situations I've been um, experimenting with them. I hope you enjoyed this video and some of the shots from Cape Sunio in Greece. Um, let me know below in the comments how you're getting on if you're using your Z series for low light photography. If you enjoyed this video, of course, always hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.